All right, cool. All right, guys. Uh, welcome back to the podcast. And today I wanted to have, I wanted to talk to uh, a dear friend of mine. We met at the bunny ball. And yeah, I'm not uh, Imran. She is a, a model, also a doppelganger. You're going to have to help me for, for this one. Aish Arya Raibaknan, um, lookalike. Uh, she's from Pakistan. You're from Pakistan, right? Partial. Yes, you got it. <laughs> You're from Pakistan? Okay, and uh, you've all been on FHM uh, Pakistan, correct? Yes. Yes, I have. Cool, cool. All right, so uh, Amna, tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about, like, how did you start modeling and, and how did you kind of rock it to this uh, social media uh, virality? Uh, they going on. First of all, thank you for having me on your podcast. It's a pleasure being here and connecting. I know it's been a while since we've met and it's a pleasure meeting you as well. Um, yeah, so it all started naturally. Actually, I was doing my own thing, uh, connecting with my patients, caring for my patients. And uh, I'm American, born and raised, so American girl first. My father's from Pakistan and India, and my mother is from Afghanistan. So I come from four countries directly mixed. And uh, so as I was giving vaccinations to my patients, um, a fantastic girl from Canada took my picture from social media, and I had no idea I went viral naturally. So as I'm giving the injections to the patients, my phone started vibrating in my pocket and I thought maybe someone was <laughs> upset with me or something. So during my break, I checked my phone and saw that there were like 10, 20, 30 articles like going viral, shocking the whole world. Um, people say that, you know, she and I resemble in her younger years. So I've always gotten that. And also with my own unique identity, just like all of us have our identities. And then I've been getting offered from Hollywood, from Pakistan industries, from India industry, from top industries globally for acting. Mm -hmm. And uh, producers and directors have contacted. And uh, it's been such a wonderful ride, honestly. And then I'm meeting, I met you in California and uh, Mr. Rehan Jalali as well so he's a hollywood fitness guru as well so one of our dear friends and uh it just blew out of control this was three years ago and it's still going i'm getting so many amazing offers and i'm humbled uh united nations reached out to me a couple months later and uh, i am very humbled to say that i'm honored and appointed as the united nations global peace mm -hmm. ambassador yeah, so representing USA, UK, and the Eastern world as well. So it bloomed. Hey, there we go. There we go. Bloomed. There we go. I think it's wonderful. Uh, also, also wonderful that you that you didn't start out as a model. You you say you're a medical professional. So you're um, you're a, you're a physician. Are you a nurse? Thanks for asking. Is yeah. There so... Specificity to your practice. Sure. Yeah, I I'm actually in a practitioner school right now. So um, in two years, God willing, I'll get my doctorate. So I'll be considered a primary care provider. So I'll be working with doctors and other healthcare providers, providing family practice mm. care. Right now, I travel and I train nurses in uh, dialysis clinics. So it's in the field of kidneys, nephrology. So I go clinic to clinic yeah. as I wish, make my own schedule, which is awesome because I get to do this. Plus that, plus United Nations. So it's, it's a pleasure caring for patients. It's super fulfilling. Yeah, and I've heard that it's very, it's also, well, there, there's more flexibility and sometimes there's better pay, pay as well as uh, just lifestyle wise to, you know, instead of being a, in a residency for a hospital for just for a couple of years at a time, right? You'll have, uh, I have some friends that do this. They have contracts yeah. where they just work at a hospital, maybe like six months, one or two years, yes. and then they have the ability to move somewhere else instead of staying at one hospital for 10 years right absolutely that's i i love how you bring that point up that's exactly what i do so i'll stay in a place like three months and then i'll hop on somewhere else if i'm feeling the vibes 
Cali is next. I got my Cali license. So mm -hmm. uh, I'll be there in a few months, possibly even move. You know, I love the West Coast. I'm in AZ right now. So it'll be nicer to be closer to my media family and friends as well. So yeah, hopping around anywhere in the U.S. as I want and as the seasons present and I guess mood. <laughs> yeah, so you've been to Cali, you're in Arizona right now. Where else have you been in the U.S.? Um, yeah, uh, you, I was born in Chicago. Right? Yeah, Chicago. Chicago. I worked in Oregon for three months and then they, I guess they liked my work. So they've extended my contract, offered. So I stayed in Oregon, uh, got my license for Wisconsin. I worked in Wisconsin. So, I mean, it's, I'm kind of a newer professional in the field. I've, do, I've been doing this maybe five to seven. I mean, according to the medical world, it's a little new, but learning so much as I go and I'm loving every minute of it and enjoying the media, like the modeling life and like the acting life and all that as well. So just dipping in. Yeah. How do you like, how do you like Wisconsin and Oregon? Um, it's very different, obviously, from California and Las Vegas, yeah, uh, San Diego, Los Angeles. Uh, those cities, you know, are much busier. Oh, yeah. Uh, just have a higher concentration of just higher, higher uh, people with just money and even models, like everybody that, that does influencing, modeling. Like, they all flock to the cities like Las Vegas, San Diego, mm -hmm. Los Angeles, and I know Wisconsin and well, Oregon. I don't know. Uh, uh, Seattle's in Washington, so you're in yeah. Portland, right? Yes. How are those cities? It's how are those cities different. different? Oh yeah, the the cities are different in such a way where Oregon and Washington they're very natural. Like we got the natural beauty mm -hmm. there. We've got the grass. We've got the rain. Like ninety percent of the time. I mean, if anybody wants to just get away from the city, just go to Oregon and uh, just sit in the lush greenery. Uh, Wisconsin is very green too. They have a lot of cheese. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Uh, okay, yeah. California, California, Arizona, we've got the palm trees, we've got the mountains, we've got, yeah, like, uh, for example, like the model industry, it's the fashion industry, it is the hub, Cali and New York are the hub. I love traveling to different states as well, because I just my own, I'm a wanderlust, like a butterfly mm -hmm. as well. So I love placing myself in different play, uh, scenes or scenarios or habitats, I guess and get to learn more about who I am and how I can um, basically live in these different kind of environments. California is very fast paced, it's hustling, it's bustling, and I love that life and for the ocean as well. How is it different? The nature, we've got California nature, it's just the pace of life that will be different. Yeah, but you, you sort of collect um, these different experiences, right? Yeah. To where sometimes you think people are super different, but yeah, they're very similar. Yeah. Um, in yeah. many aspects, especially when you go country to country, and you know, everybody eats like around kind of the same time. Yes, 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 absolutely. And everybody has a fast paced lifestyle. You, you kind of tend to slow down around noon time. Like, I know if you've ever been to Spain, uh, people get off work at two, like, they'll eat lunch, they get off of work at two, mm -hmm. and they, they go back to work and they have like a siesta time. Yes. Right? Yeah. Oh, I think that's so neat. And Pakistan, the same thing. And I'm sure mm -hmm. India, the same thing. Bangladesh, the same thing, where um, there are certain days where they open up a little later, uh, like the malls and such. And the malls are stay, they stay open late too, because a lot of the public's days begin in the afternoon. Whereas over here in uh, America, our days begin like four in the morning, six in the morning and such, for example. I wake up around three in the morning to get to work at five in the morning or four in the morning. Then I'm finished by four or 5 p.m. So you are right. We have a lot of similarities globally and then differences as well, which is appreciated. Yeah. Any uh, any food you said cheeses. So like I, I don't know much about uh, Pakistani food, but, you know, I'm guessing you've tried like fondue, like uh, shakuru boards are big, like in, in the downtown cultures. Right. Yeah, so in Pakistan, like yeah, they, mm -hmm. uh, Pakistan and Indians they enjoy rice. Um, I know some eat meat, and I know lentils are are big is a big staple as well. Veggies, the food is just mouth watering <laughs> overseas as well. Um, I enjoyed my trip in the eastern part of the world, and I feel like I went for two weeks, and that was plenty of time for me to go. 
and enjoy myself and visit different cities and then come back. Uh, being an American, I feel like the differences in the water quality and uh, just the air, anywhere you go, it's a little different. So I always have to be careful of even state to state, just uh, be cognizant of my health and care for my health mm -hmm. as well. Regarding food, oh yeah, the food is, I want to say bomb.com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, so when you travel, did, did you ever get, um, um, did you ever get like a, like a, like a stomach bug or anything like that? I know, I know for me, right, I was here in the U.S. Uh, for like six years and I go back to South America. Uh -huh. I just know that the first time I went back and I was like, man, I want to try some street food or just some restaurant. Or, yeah. Um. Uh, the things different right so even the the micro the microbiomes that yeah yeah uh, the things in your right a little bit different so the uh the way that they clean the food uh, is different so i know yeah. the first few times that i always visited south america i always got sick like the first two days and then i was fine right mm -hmm. yeah it's does that happen to you yeah uh where in south america did you go what country were you in I went to well, I went to Ecuador, Colombia, I went to Peru. Oh, but, okay. You know, when when you just are in the U.S. Uh, for a long time, and they just have um, these like all the water's filtered, and you know the, yeah. the food is shown differently. Yes. That yes, yes, um, the change it just affects yeah, your body. Absolutely, beautiful countries, and then um, yes, I did had to kind of adjust myself to the food and the water. I basically drank filtered water um, at the the hotel that I was staying at. And uh, their mm -hmm. quality of food was fantastic. So I didn't get sick. I made sure that I just ate from that hotel and not any street food just to uh, avoid potential sickness. I have to keep myself healthy. So then when I travel from the Eastern world to the Western world, my patients need me. So I wanted to make sure I'm healthy. And if I'm healthy, I can care for my patients. So if yeah. I get sick, <laughs> If I get sick, my patients will cry and they ask for me. So they're like, where is Amna? Why is she not here? Wait, she's on TV. <laughs> you know. So uh, they always look forward. They always look forward to seeing it. Yeah, I didn't get sick this time. Uh, a little bit towards the end, but it's it was just a little nausea, but it was nothing. Yeah, I mean, if you go to the high-end restaurants and the, the chic spas downtown there's, there's always less risk it's more so when you're kind of like just walking down you know yeah uh, maybe you have like a doctor's appointment and then down the street there's just some lady selling kebabs or tamales yeah. and you're like ah yeah. let me just grab it something it smells so quick. good oh my god that's usually the one that always gets yeah i want to just gobble it all up if i could i would just take a whole plate and just inhale the food <laughs> the food just smells mm -hmm. the street smells so good i'm actually salivating right now from this talking about food yeah, the the streets smell delicious from the different, you know, aroma from like rice and veggies and such. I just wish I could have it. <laughs> yeah. So you say you um I read your bio, Lauren. I think you said that your parents they were in India, but uh they're from Pakistan and Afghanistan. Like how was that? And then you grew up in the US, right? Yeah. So Thanks for asking this question. So is, is there more? Is there more? Um, is there more in terms of like your parents raising you, or was there like that mix of uh, Pakistani and Afghani? Oh yeah. Culture. Is, oh wow, this is a question that nobody's asked me before. You know, I like absolutely think this is such a creative question. My so my parents they um, immigrated here over forty years ago to the USA, and they met in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, my mother's Afghan, dad is Pakistani Indian. So, so then they they fell in love and then they had me. I'm a mixture of those countries. So I was born in Chicago. So that's how it came about. Learning the cultures and languages, it's from being the first child. My mom would be on her phone. My dad would be on his phone. And, they, you know, families coming over, speaking in their languages. So I guess I absorbed all the languages. Dialects? Like between... And your dad, right? Could you repeat that? You froze for a second. Yeah. 
in Pakistan and Afghanistan, but I assume that they're very similar and they also have just different dialects since they're very close countries. Okay, I'm catching on to what you're saying. I, it's kind of frozen a little bit. Um, yes, they have. Mm. They are completely different cultures. It's like Mexico and China. Um, the cultures are completely. Okay. So Afghanistan and Pakistan are completely different. So the languages are different. The food food is different. the The clothing cultures are completely different. There are dialects in the different languages as well. Yeah. How many how many languages are in both? Like I'm assuming more than than two. Multiple, multiple. Is that there. a multiple? Okay. Oh, are you? I'm sorry, you're freezing. Are you asking about how many dialects are in each of the countries? Like how much? Uh, how many different languages? In each country. Yes. I, I'm not really sure, but I know there's more than a dozen. There's so many different, there's um, the city language, and then there's also like tribal languages that I don't even know. So they're in all parts of Pakistan, in all parts of India. India is like a world within a world too. In Pakistan, same thing. So there are different dialects. There are different languages within the tribes as well. More than a dozen, for sure, easily. <laughs> I know for because I know for sure everybody in the US uh, speaks uh, English and Spanish, right? And then where I'm from, yeah. there's only one Indian language that well, there's a couple in the Amazon, but people in the Amazon don't really connect with the rest of like. If you've ever, ever seen the way that Ecuador, uh, Peru, and Colombia are set up, is like yes, yes, population. Yeah, I know. Everything in the Amazon is completely empty. So yes. like those tribes like left alone. Like those are yes. those are the ones. Sometimes you don't even know if they do cannibalism or something. Like you know I how would, they are. I would love to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would love to. Let's just go and like take a sneak peek at like what kind of a life they live. I I understand yeah. what you said. Like they're disconnected from life here, and we think sometimes that we're like the only communities here, like alive or living, but there's a whole different world out there where people are not even like they're living in the jungles they don't have access to or they don't want access to even technology and they're just living their life you know i would love to just spend a day safely in this pl these places just to, just to yeah, see yeah the, the, those, those are the type of trips those are the those are trips where you get a guy you get it and you're like hey around this so like yeah i don't cross some river like bitten by a snake some guy like uh Thinks I'm trying to like steal his food from his tribe. Those are the type of places, at, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. But in general, but in general, there's like another subset of uh, native language that's just been there for, right? So it's a like, language, or in some cases called Quechua. So it's like well, whatever local tribe, right? So yeah. that's how a lot of uh, words are mixed in together with the Spanish. That's why, like, uh, that's why, like, Venezuelans sound different than Peruvians because their Spanish is mixed with the native language, right? Okay. Right. That's in so incredible to hear. And like you said, like the different worlds, like that. Um, there's some cultural classes clashes mm -hmm. between Pakistan and Afghanistan. Like Peruvians don't like Venezuelans, like it's <laughs> you know it's always like been a thing like that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's more so of a it's more so of a team thing. Our tribe is better than uh, your tribe, right? Mm -hmm. And our country is bigger than your country. Mm -hmm. It always boils down to, you know, it's like prevalent and mm -hmm. there's always like that kind of competition. Oh yes, um, yeah. That's been going on for culture. Absolutely, yeah. It's I think it's. It's prevalent, like you said. It's definitely prevalent. I just wish peace for everyone, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Peace. Yeah, that's why. That's why. Um, that's why we invent. Uh, you know, in America, right? We have football games because it's like, all right, if we want to uh, have a conflict between. Yeah. If we wanna, if we want to have a conflict like Chicago and New York, it's like okay, instead <laughs> of fighting each other, we're just let's play. It's a healthy you know, competition. have a guy have a team. Yeah. yeah, have a basketball competition. It's right send yeah. the basketball team 
yeah. team and then this this city is better because of it. Oh yeah, absolutely. See, that's healthy competition. I think that's fantastic, you know. We should be at peace with each other and uh like you said in sports competitions against you know each other yeah. cities even countries and team you know we've got soccer too that's an international sport everybody loves mm -hmm. so yeah that's definitely healthy competition that i'm all for <laughs> yeah that's what, mostly for the men and then for the women it's like we'll do you know miss you miss uh miss yeah. earth right i, like, I our, our like women are pretty than your women <laughs> yeah I think every woman is unique in their way. And honestly, I watch, I like watching sports when I can. <laughs> the Miss Universe, Miss Earth, that's great to watch as well. Rock on, you know, girls as well. I find yeah. sports to be more fun to watch because then we've got like the chips bags and we've got the snacks, everybody stuffing their faces, you know, really enjoying their time, like fist pumping and all that. So. Yeah, the competition is everywhere. And I think healthy competition is a very good thing. Yeah, of course. Um, what that, That's what I love about the, the U.S. Um, we're, we're just talking about perspectives, right? It's like yeah. you said, like, oh, it's um, you mentioned earlier, like, oh, it's because uh, and people don't know that there's a bigger world. It's like, well, I had the realization, too. I don't know if you had it when you traveled abroad and then came back to the U.S since everybody travels in kilometers yeah in, yes. in everywhere else in the world a mile is actually bigger bigger than a kilometer yeah so for most people you know they're country another country like if you live in france you can go to germany yes but concept and how big because u.s is one state like you said Oregon, Arizona, like Oregon, Oregon, Arizona, and California, they're right. Yes. But when you just think about it like that, it's like most people live in their country of uh, Arizona. They don't, they can leave. The U.S. Is, is accessible, made it accessible. Yes. To various different locations, different coasts. But the, the, the Midwest is still like its own country. It's like, yes. Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Kuzbekistan. Yes. So, I like how you, compared you know, when you that. think about most Americans not leaving. Yeah, when you think about most Americans not leaving their own region, it's like their own country in, in, in a way. They yeah. don't have to leave. This is. They don't. Yeah. And that's the beauty of being an American as well and being in America and living in America. Like you said, it's every region has its own practices we have different accents we have different um dialects right the southern we've got the northern uh, eastern western yeah, yeah, yeah. um i'm like a blend <laughs> i've got like the midwest plus mostly like california i guess you know communication and now and that's the beauty of america we have everything here we've got you know a world within a world even in america as well we're like a melting pot if you if you in new york you're, you're some people that have never left new york like that's in their state you think that, that's so funny like yeah i mean they've got everything like they've never even yeah. been to the capital of new york which is albany like they've never been to <laughs> buffalo but they've been in manhattan right i mean it's a fashion hub too yeah we got fashion there we've got food there i mean they've got the living there they've got the style so i mean new york mm -hmm. is like its own country you know Oh, yeah. When you go to Harlem, they're like, oh, Harlem, that's so far. I'm like, man, that's so far. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's like a uh, two train ride. Like. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think from all the states, I mean, I love Arizona as well since I'm from here. I really enjoyed California. Oh, you're frozen. And... <laughs> yeah, and on the top of its own um its own its own country like california and texas and new york and huge. florida are the the most popular uh heavily populated states yeah. those have the most concentration in their yes yes because uh, i don't have you brought your family your family when they traveled to california I, I brought my family members yeah um from another country and they're always like, oh my God, like California is so big. Like it is very like, they wanted they thought Los Angeles was just an hour away. And then like oh, yeah, getting yeah. to the outside of Los Angeles. You know, I like and how you're getting 
across yeah. Los Angeles, a whole other hour. Yeah. So you brought your family here to California, it sounds like. Yeah. Um, and uh, when I was overseas, you know, to different countries, they were asking me to, so how far is this place? How far is Canada from where you are? Is it like a 15 minute walk or what? I was like, no. Yeah. yeah. It's like a Train three hour it. flight. It's a three hour flight. Like America's massive. And then Canada is huge too. So, I mean, like the distance is far. So I showed them a map. I said, this is what, this is what a kilometer is. This is what a mile is. And this is how long the flight takes. And they, their jaw just dropped. They're like, this is how big America is. This, I mean, they were really impressed. Yeah. Um, yeah. They wanted to come, go from, um, they wanted to cross Los Angeles. And I was like, okay, we can go downtown. They can go. Yeah. To all these other places i'm like that's gonna take like two other days like <laughs> yeah and um, i don't understand how people who lived in la have never let's say they live in inglewood into the right i was like ah, that doesn't make sense right and then i was in college I was like i can understand how somebody has never been to manhattan beach because you can you can go your whole life just being in downtown, I'll never leave. Or has that happened to you too when you've gone through LA? Oh, yeah. Even in La Jolla. Like when I was in La Jolla, just that one day I was just there. There's so much to do in each like area of California that like you can spend a whole week in a little place. Not even a little place. Like for example, San Diego. Yeah, it has happened to me where I was in um, LA for a wedding, actually a friend's wedding. And I mean, there's so much to do over there, not only the wedding, but like it took more than a week just to explore a certain part or like a certain street. I mean, it, there's so much to do in California. That's what I love about it, too. You've got the beach 20 minutes away. You've got the city life. You've got the shopping. You've got, you know, amazing, you know, uh, museums even. So much to do and so much to explore. Yeah. Have you tried? Like, uh, have you tried a California burrito? What is what is that? The California burrito. No, all this food talk is. Oh, making... you gotta try a California burrito. <laughs> like in San Diego, they make it better in San Diego. So they... just uh, it's a burrito wow. that's fries in it. Guac. They have the, the carne asada. Oh my gosh, and that sounds really and good. Have, like, sounds good to eat in somewhere. the morning. <laughs> eat that in the morning. Like you start off your day with that. <laughs> and then you'll burn your calories after it sounds really good is it made of like steak chicken or or just whatever you want yeah they, they usually have them in those they're better in san diego though like they keep they keep saying that tacos are better this is what i'm hearing from tiktok i don't know how accurate this is oh they keep saying that tacos are better in los angeles and then like if you actually want a good california burrito you go to yeah. san diego yeah yeah, I would see Juana has the best Mexican food though. So. I'd I'd go five hours on a flight for a burrito. I wouldn't mind, <laughs> especially if it's that good. Then if you want to go to barbecue, obviously you go to Texas. So Texas, yeah, I yeah I've been to Houston and the food is pretty good over there too. I think the big capital cities are that's where the food's at. Yeah, but you, you gotta get the you gotta get the you gotta go to the grill city where they serve it to you in paper. Like that's that's the real uh, that's the real deal. <laughs> that's, 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 that's the real street. deal. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'll have to try these delicious places out the next time I'm in California. Yeah, of course, of course. Um also, so you um you know you work as a medical right and then you travel to places blown up on on social media and that's allowed you to travel to more places right so where has that taken you because now you you recently mentioned that you worked on a commercial yes um in the middle east so yeah what I else mean, has happened uh, since then? yeah um, tons of connections going on. So after the commercial, I've been getting a lot of, you know, connections from producers and directors. They're just waiting for me to head over to the eastern part of the world as well. So they can get me into more commercials and uh, offered dramas, offered movies and acting. Um, 
I guess they like the way I look on TV as well, because in reality, you know, they it's from everybody uh, mentioning and obviously the one above, you know, he created me and she is known as Miss World from 1994, 1996. I have loved her since I was a child. And it just happened to be that, you know, I guess people say, you know, our faces like and our body and everything kind of resembles, they resemble each other. So when they saw me in reality and I got into that one commercial and then the different magazines and podcasts, they were just, their, their jaws just dropped. They're like, this girl is real. Like even without filters, this girl is real. She does resemble and they, they love her there as much as they, we love Angelina Jolie. So that's the equivalence of this woman. She is Mrs. Bachchan, Eshraya Bachchan, and she also has acted in a Hollywood movie called Bride and Prejudice. So the other day at work, there are two wonderful colleagues I work with, and I have I barely speak, you know, I mean, they bear, they just started the work at that facility. They pulled me after lunch, which was really sweet, and they said, have you seen the movie Bride and Prejudice? She looks like you. You look like her. They, I do not mention it to anyone at work. I try to, you know, stay humble and keep it discreet. But when they, people who are not even, people who are Hispanic are saying this to me. And it's incredible because even people outside of my cultures are saying, oh my goodness, you guys resemble. I, mean, I just saw her in the movie. You could like literally be her doppelganger. Like you could fill in her role over there. So later I tell them like, yeah, that's what I went viral for naturally. And so it's just, it's been so much fun. They're discovering it. pulling up right now like so you they say you look like yeah her the like younger the younger version of ash mrs butchen or mrs ashwari Rai. you've seen me in reality too so it's like <laughs> yeah i don't know real this is like they're comparing um definitely the other is she is she Bollywood? I really don't know that world. She's, at yeah, all. she's Bollywood. She's like the one of the like uh, queens of Bollywood. Yeah. Bollywood star. I will pull up. I'll pull up a picture. I just, I just love. There's two things that I, th I think it's super cool. Yeah. Compared to if you can compare them, is. The this Bollywood is... soap operas. Oh, that's yeah, that the eyes. I see it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, the eyes have a very strong resemblance. But yeah, like I was saying, like Bollywood, the the dramas, the soap operas. There, there's so, I see these uh these where they cut them up, like they just make them even more dramatic. And they're very similar to the <laughs> To Spanish soap opera. Novelas. <laughs> so yeah, Spanish soap opera novelas. The novelas. They're super, super long, but I love how they just cut them up and they just pose like the real <laughs> TikTok on Instagram. Yeah. Those are the ones I end up watching. And, and yeah. then the, the, the Indian one, I think there was one with a girl, uh, I think after, like the late, and then like she fell down the stairs. The stairs? The house, and then she got in the car. Yeah. <laughs> and then they zoom in and on that. She rolled like five goes... times away from the car. <laughs> That's fifteen times. She's like rolling down, and then they show it again, and then they show it again, and then she's still falling. Five years later, she's still falling. Ten years later, she's still falling. Old, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it's it's um the drama makes it spicy, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, definitely too for the. There's this one called um, what was it called? It it's like Annabelle or some some shit like that. Um, okay. And it's like this this girl that I'll I'll pull I'll correct it later. But there's yeah. specific drama that's super super popular where is this chick that she starts out poor, she's super entitled, like super just like determined to marry a rich guy, right? Mm -hmm. Assuming that everybody kind of gives her shit because she's very. She's also very poor, so she goes on like this, this like revenge quest to just essentially marry a rich guy, and then I guess it doesn't work out and try to get revenge on the rich guy. So she's just very, oh. like, very petty. 
Oh yeah. She's like the pettiest person ever. And these are the memes are just everywhere all the time. Of like mm -hmm. that one just one soap opera and the one novella like. Yeah. <laughs> Is this a um a novella you're speaking of or like a Pakistani or it's a novella, yeah. Oh novella. No, it's yeah. Not. Yeah. Um, the Mexican and novella. Yeah, and millions of people watch it. You know, it's just so entertaining. It's nice to, nice. It's just so entertaining. What are uh, some classic like soap operas? Because uh, you get compared to a lot of people. So, are there any like that you're a big fan of that you're like, hey, this is something that has like international appeal? Like, yeah. Like soap you yeah, well, soap operas, I, I, you know, to be honest with you, my mom watches all of them. So my mom's a pro. And if you like tell an actor's name or actress, she knows exactly which novella or which soap opera that actress or actor belongs. So she knows the family tree. Like, that's how good she is. For me, because I was like in school and honestly, I, I didn't haven't watched a lot of soap operas because I, I haven't had the time, honestly. I watched a lot of Bollywood movies, though, um, and it's mostly hers. Okay. You, I watch okay. movies. Hold on. Sorry, I think you were frozen for a second. So you, the Bollywood movies of the of the of the chick you resemble like that's who you watch. Oh you know? yes, yes. There's a movie um named Dave Das that I've watched, and this was like. A few years ago and i absolutely love the clothing the attire the fashion the decorations and like they spent probably millions of dollars on everything from their jewelry to the sets the sets are so magical that i haven't seen a movie like that before and the way each character acts it's phenomenal that's in regards to acting this is how what i want to become like one of the main actors his name is Shah Rukh khan and his acting is out of this world, honestly. And I'm a big fan of his work. And then she also acts in it as well. And she's maybe like 29 at that time. And she just she looks like a fairy in that movie. So yeah, I watch a lot of Bollywood movies, soap operas. I haven't really watched, you know, because they, they have different episodes and I, it's hard to keep up. <laughs> Super long. It's like 80, yeah, 100 long. episodes, yeah. like yeah. all the time. Yeah. I mean, I've 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 watched them, but involuntarily, just because you get home from school and it's playing, or it's like, yeah, you get yeah. home uh, after you're playing with your friends or something at seven or eight, mm -hmm. and it's just it, what's playing on on the yeah. TV. So I was just like, oh, okay, cool. Like, yeah, there's another, and there's yeah. like, like for two years straight, going right. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, the name, the name of the the name of the soap opera, which is. Look up Teresa Novella. Oh, okay. Just, the most dramatic, like, shit. Just, <laughs> just always slapping somebody or just being like, I fucked your man. Or, like, I'm going to be rich and you suck. Like, just her just being petty as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. A lot of a lot of uh, storylines out there. A lot of plots out there. And I've seen that some even borrow some from the others. And they, like, twist it, put some spices in it, put some feels in it, emotions. And... They make magic out of it. Yeah, of course. And then, yeah. um, they've they've asked like police over in that region, India. I'm guessing to act. Like, have you ever acted before, or are you gonna take some acting classes? Like, yeah. Like, what's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been offered in India as well. What I put, what I do mm -hmm. see myself doing is honing acting skills in Cali. Because I'm so close and we we have some of the best acting schools. So if I have time, I will definitely jump into acting here. I know like there are some actors currently, like for example, Tom Cruise, from what I hear, if I may be wrong, forgive me. <laughs> I believe he hasn't been to any acting school. So all the stunts and uh, action that he takes part in in the movies, it's all his own. Like he does the stunts on his own. His acting is like natural from what i've heard there are other actresses and actors as well that haven't been to acting school and they just got in and worked hard worked hard all the way up i do i do plan to get some skills though i mean um, it's always good to improve in anything that you do right
So we have the best schools in California. So I'm thinking about heading there. Yeah, there, there's one thing you need to do, and it's uh, I forgot what, I forgot which documentary I was watching, but they were like, oh no, the reason we want this, uh, I think it was like Amanda Bynes, one of those schools. Uh huh. If you know, they'll 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 definitely like pick you out of those. I, I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. I'm They'll gonna, definitely pick me out. You said cry on command. Oh yeah. <laughs> so if you learn how to cry, cry like a man. Uh, you said. It's like. Oh, cry on command. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I can I can do that. I can do that. That that's that's one thing where I heard of where. It was like uh, one of these like kids documentaries where they're talking about like kid actors and stuff like that. They're like, oh, this girl can cry on command. Like, that's the one we want. It's like, oh. Yeah, I would have to think. Yeah, yeah. It, I would have to think of something extremely sad that has happened in somebody else's life or something that I've experienced. And then I can cry on command. Like thinking about it and getting myself really back to that point and this or feeling for the poor, especially for the poor. Like if I think about what they go through, and I have to cry on command, I would bawl thinking, you know, about the poor. Yeah, so I know you work as a, as a medical professional here in the U.S. You said you, you, you used to give out vaccines. Like, you also mentioned that you worked overseas uh, in other hospitals or like Red Cross. Like, what's, uh, what's up with that? Like, did you try <laughs> work over there? Yeah, that's a good question. So I am planning to finish my practitioner role. Mm -hmm. um, and it will be about two years. So after two years, my plan is with the United Nations is to assist humanity on a global scale. So I would be able to you know, write prescriptions and do more with my advanced training, my advanced education. Um, I, I could work in Dubai if I wanted, which is only two hours away from or maybe an hour or something like that away from Pakistan or like the Eastern part of the world. So it's something that I can carry with me wherever I am. If I'm acting, let's say 12 hours, literally the next day I could get up in the morning and do my work and then go back on set in the evening. So it's something that's so flexible. And if I want in the future, I could work in the, with the American Red Cross. As for now, I am just solely based in the USA, live here, born here, and I'm working here since six, seven years as a medical professional. Yeah, and then you, uh, you showed me, you showed me that you, so you worked with the United Nations and you got like special, like diplomat uh, pass yeah. license or something like that. Like, mm -hmm. was that, you told me it wasn't hard to get, right? This because of going viral, it is only uh -huh. a, it's been an honor because it, only a small percentage of the world's population is honored and appointed this specific diplomatic status. And it's a badge with a shield. I wish I had it with me. Um, I carry it with me everywhere I go. I just have it set in a very, you know, private area right now. Yes, uh, I did my diplomacy training and it's it's such an honor, honestly, to take that hand in hand with the medical profession. It was honored because I went viral and apparently because of resembling an actress. However, what they found is I am much more deeper than that. So I have many layers from what they say as well. I got the medical, I've got the diversity, I've got, I'm living in America, born in America. I speak English and I speak the other languages. Um, so they saw potential in me. So after going viral, you know, uh, around the world, they discovered that there is more to what the eye sees. So it's it's been fantastic. Yeah, that, that's what I've seen, and and that's what I uh kind of agree with um their choice because thank you. you know sometimes they sometimes they will choose individuals, and not not, not just um I don't want to say just like I, I'll say like more the entertainment in general, right? It's like. Sometimes you're the only Mexican actor, like guy from I don't know India that happens to be in some movie, yeah. And you've probably been acting your whole life, so you don't have anything else outside of acting. So then, yeah. those people become uh, default representatives, right? Instead of somebody that 
you know, may have something other going on, may have another specialty, um, may actually be well-educated, right? Because sometimes they'll, they'll, some model will become famous here in LA. Um, yeah. Just from some country and, or they're an artist. Yeah. And you know, that they've, they've just dedicated so much time to being a model or an actress or, yes. Uh, yeah. or a musician yes. that they don't have like another uh, profession or like educational background, right? Yes. Yes. Um, Thank you for saying yeah, that. Yeah, I do think it's a, a good choice. It's a good choice to choose individuals more so like that, that also, Thank apart you. from being professionals, you know, work with uh, charities, right? They have like a bigger uh, mission than just, you know, becoming viral, right? right? Yes. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It, it hit the heart, honestly, mm -hmm. but what you mentioned, it's, like I said, it's truly humbling and your words literally hit my heart and I'm striving every day. I'm trying to improve myself every day. And yes, I see myself in entertainment alongside, like you said, carry on the torch for the medical field and helping humanity on the side as well. And then embracing my individuality as well. For example, I love fashion. I love, you know, modeling beautiful clothing. I love acting. I love, you know, meeting new people. So we are more than what the eye can see. And we are just, just talented individuals that you know, sometimes it just comes out naturally. So I've been really blessed, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it's very negligent when uh, just certain individuals that become famous for becoming famous, like maintain that. And then all of a sudden they want to turn them into, uh, you know, figureheads, right? So like, oh, this person's famous or viral because they've, they're yeah. a, a, a streamer or something mm -hmm. or just some TikTok star. And they're like, okay, now we want this person to be like, the figurehead for, I don't know, some kind of diversity thing or like, yeah, um, or like global, what is it? Some, some, um, economic conservation or like environmental conservation project or something. Yes. And that person does not understand what, you know, what the actual mission is or why, uh, even just like statistics about what they're backing up. Right. Like they have mm -hmm. no education. There's like, Oh, person that, to be like the promoter yes. of a uh, solar power or something. Or like an ambassador. So, I get what you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's a it's a learning phase for sure for me. I'm learning every day. And I'm just really glad that I get to blend all of this into one. And I make time for everything. So for example, this I'm really thankful for your, you know, podcast and you know, time as well. And then uh, I'll be in California for more future projects. And I'm super excited, you know we live once right we live life once and we gotta make, we gotta make the most out of it all of us have 24 hours in a day and we mm. can sleep a portion of it but the rest of the time like what are we doing i know i'm making videos <laughs> or like yeah. i'm going out doing you know spending time with family and friends that the uh, family portion i don't put too much on social media because what is cherished to me i don't post like special special to me personally my media, my UN, my medical, all of that is posted. You know, I want the world to know you can be who you want to be while being yourself and be multi-talented in anything. And it could just hit you all at once when you least expect it like it did for me. Super excited. Yeah, has that changed other aspects uh, like friendships or like the people that, that want to be seen with you or go on dates and stuff? Yes. Has that changed? Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Something super yes. viral? my patients they bring a glove out and they're like please give me your autograph you know and then i have uh, a lot of connections from the social media like please can we they're begging for an autograph or they're begging to take a picture or just they want a piece of my cloth to save in like a frame and hang it up like this is how much love i am getting from people in pakistan they want my shoes they're like please can we have your shoes i mean they can't even afford shoes but they want my shoes because so they feel like as you know, quote unquote, special in them. So I've given donated a lot of my uh, clothing and jewelry and such just so I could leave a little love behind as well. Um, yeah, uh, pictures and uh, friendship wise, friendship wise, I've gained a lot of media friends, a lot of top high quality, top notch friends. Um, have I lost friends? They were friends to begin with if I've lost them. So does it affect me no but i do keep them in my thoughts you know when a person is shining on i don't allow anybody to dim my light unless this light goes off that's 
shining on me right now. <laughs> yeah, you gotta call your electrician. Yeah, we got we gotta shine on. We got <laughs> life is too short to be worried about what people think. Friendships that are um toxic. I've I haven't honestly really experienced any of that, but there have been some friends who um, unfortunately, you know, they took another path and they just distanced themselves. And I'm okay with that. I wish them the best as well. And I've gained tons of more beautiful friends, beautiful hearted friends who are cheering me on, supporting me. And those are the kind of positive vibe people you want to be surrounded with in the first place. So I'm lucky. Yeah, very well said. Very well said. Very Thanks. well said, Amna. And then uh, I know you're traveling a lot, but I hope you, well, you're, you already went to the bunny ball. So the teddy ball is November. And then I hope, I hope to see you also at the babies. We just had the babes in Toyland, a charity event for uh, veterans and for troops overseas. So we always have, you know, more of those events. Um, we have one for breast cancer, for homeless, uh, for homeless animals, right. Uh, domestic abuse. So like, yeah but all the same people nino was there uh christian everybody so yeah. we usually oh, great meeting. It's... makes it out to those yeah when you're in town in la uh in vegas and um i'll just send you an invite and then probably make it out to one of those appreciate that i appreciate that yeah i love all of you guys so much lots of fun good vibes with all of you so much fun connecting as well and you know it's just natural what is it? Positive vibes, high tides, shine on, rock on. Yeah, yeah, those are those are like my motto. So, thank you so much again for inviting me on your yeah. amazing podcast interview, and have a wonderful evening as well. Yeah, I hope to see you soon too. Thank you. Right, let me stop this report. Bye.